Uh, my name is Amy Fuller. I'm inter interim director of the Cuyahoga County Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome everyone. Um, I want to take this time to ask everybody if you haven't already to please mute um, as we get the presentation started. I want to take just a couple minutes to thank um, our silver sponsor, Two Plus Four Management. They can just sponsor uh, this yeah, event at the virtual level. And then also our diamond members, Tompkins Trust Company and Lions National Bank and our media sponsor, The Citizen. So I wanna thank all of those. Um, at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Mayor Michael Quill who will be presenting first and after him will be Jeff Diger. If you have questions as this goes along, uh, Jessica will be monitoring the chat after both presentations. Uh, we'll try to get through as many of those questions um, as we can. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to the city. Welcome Mayor Quill and Jeff Digert, city manager. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, thank you. I'd like to take a moment to thank the chamber for sponsoring this event. We've been on a two year, I believe it is hiatus. It's always exciting, but uh, we're gonna catch up and we're getting back in the swing of things as quickly as we can. I'd like to take a minute and introduce my co-workers. I know at least two of them are present this morning. Councilor Ginny Kent and Councilor Jimmy Genentino. I've seen you on here. I don't know if anyone else, but we also have Councilor Terry Cuddy and Councilor Tim LaCastro. So welcome, glad to do this, and uh, we'll go from there. We're going to begin today with a brief video we have prepared of sites around Auburn. Some of these sites we see every day, other sites are maybe more behind the scenes. You may be familiar with some sites and other sites, you may wonder what you were looking at. Everything in this video is associated with our city organization and presents just an overview of things we work on every day. We'd like to start out today with this video and I encourage everyone to follow along and see how many sites you know and do not know. We can't see the video, guys. I don't know if there's a problem, but there's no video that's showing.
those of who, for those of you who were not able to uh, watch the video, we will do our best to correct that and get it back out to you. But we will continue on in the meantime. Following two years of our pandemic, the state of the city of Auburn is stable, and our local city government remains a steady and resilient presence, delivering essential public services to our people every day. The pandemic has dealt us challenges and opportunities, and we proceed daily addressing them all. One lesson that we have all experienced during these past few years is our greatest resource is our people. If you can, hopefully you can see it screen some of the, some of our employees who were picked not by their own willingness, but we're glad to sit through a photo op. So we're proud of each and every one of them. And none of them is head and shoulders above the others. They're all equal. They're all great employees, great people, and great neighbors. On behalf of the city council, we recognize and thank our city manager and all of our public employees that have been there the past two years providing the stability of local government service that makes Auburn the great place to live and work that we all know it to be. Our city employees, over 350 plus, public servants, and we would like to thank them all for their service. Our next slide, hopefully you can see it. We have pictures of, from the Department of Public Works, municipal utilities, water, sewer, trash, pickup, parks, streets, snow plowing, et cetera, et cetera. The, the list just keeps growing and growing and growing for, for that department. Our next slide, we talk, We have a slide of the police department. Uh, we have a brand new chief. Chief Slayton has been on board for a few months. He's doing a terrific job. Uh, as they used to say in, in the Marine Corps, he was handed a can of worms with everything that happened to him all at once. But he's doing very, very well with all the men and women who work with. Ambulance service, Mr. Diker will be speaking about our new ambulance service. And then we have our new fire station on the Seminary and Nelson Street. Uh, for many years it's been uh, idle, vacant, but it's come a long way. And just so the firefighters know, I drive by there two or three times a day on the way to work and back. So enjoy yourself, but you have a beautiful building to work with. One thing to keep in mind is all during the pe pandemic for the last few years, our employees continue to work public works, police, fire, ambulance, no one took any time off. It was business as usual for the most part. The next slide that we have is of uh, our city manager, Mr. Jeff Diger. Very quick story about Jeff. When uh, Mr. Selby decided to retire, I asked him who would be the best replacement on an interim basis for himself. And without taking this a thought, he suggested Jeff Diger. I, know, I had known Jeff at that time for a number of years, working with him at the fire department. I got to know him very well. And once Jeff came on board, I personally have never looked back and I have never heard any of the council members uh, look back and maybe thinking we should have rethought or whatever, but uh, no Jeff, there's no pay raise in it, but you're doing a great job, so thank you. Excuse so me, that, Mayor Quill. Yes. The, the slides are not advancing. So I don't know if there's a tech technical issue at your end. Uh, uh, Amy, would you like us to hold up and try to share them or what would you like to do? We're, we're working on it now, what would you like? If you're working on it, you can continue to give us the update and then as they fix it, we can go back to it if that'll work. Which slide are you viewing now, Amy? Just the first slide that says the state of the city, Auburn, New York. Yeah, okay. Just I, I have two gentlemen here scratching their heads, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, just, uh, I'm gonna fix it right now, and so just let's uh, proceed, and then at the end of this, we'll be able to edit all into a video that makes sense. Is that fair enough, Amy? Did you hear that? 
That's fine. And if we can't, we can forward the slideshow to everybody that's on here. But if you want to just continue with your presentation, I apologize for the glitch, guys. That's all right. As long as it's not it's okay. my glitch. So, uh, so with it, no further talking from Mike, I'd like to introduce our city manager, Mr. Jeff Diger. Jeff. Thank you, Mayor. And thanks to the chamber for continuing to co coordinate and promote this annual update. And thank you to Steve Selvick from our planning department for putting the presentation together. Uh, it would be more impressive, I think, if you could all see it right at the moment. But uh, we'll continue to go on. Is that our, our direction? Chuck, just keep moving. OK. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to breeze through our presentation today. There is actually quite a bit of material to cover. Um, as the mayor stated, I'd like to restate thanks to all, all of our city staff and the city council for supporting staff uh, throughout the last couple of years of COVID. Uh, many communities uh, two years ago decided to put a halt on many things. They, they halted projects and they uh, furloughed employees, laid off employees. We did none of the above. We decided to take a, a, a study uh, measured approach to things and continued to provide all of the daily services that the community is accustomed to. Uh, along the way, we made new partnerships. Uh, we expanded existing partnerships, like the partnership we've had for years with the Cuga County Health Department, expanded partnerships with Auburn Community Hospital, and found a new partner in East Hill Family Medical. Um, we early on provided a COVID vaccine uh, hotline to assist citizens that, that weren't uh, necessarily as uh, well informed of uh, the online registration process. We, we put people uh, to work here, guiding those people through the process to help get testing and vaccines out in the community. And that, that extended beyond the borders of the city of Auburn throughout Cuyahoga County. Um, our staff uh, from a number of departments, actually from all of our departments, uh, took part in testing and vaccination clinics, they distributed personal protective equipment, and uh, has helped to distribute funding throughout the community as part of the rebuilding process. There's so many things I could talk about about COVID, but I think after two years, most folks have had enough discussion about COVID and I'm gonna move on. And hopefully those are all be things that uh, we look at and uh, learn from in the future. Um, on the tail end of COVID, uh, the city received funding through the American Rescue Plan Act. So in total, the city of Auburn received approximately $23 million that is going to be distributed to the city in two tranches. The first tranche was received uh, in May of 2021, and it's about half of that $23 million. And we expect to receive the second tranche in May of uh, 2022. Uh, those funds are going to be utilized to uh, fund economic recovery in the not-for-profit world and uh, restore, uh, help to restore some businesses and government operations. So we'll continue along with those things. So those are just uh, a couple of the things that are certainly highlights but there was much more that happened in, in 2021 uh, that, that sometimes as time goes by, it's been such an active year, I think we forget about a few of the things that have happened. So on the list, uh, Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, in many ways, it, it was impactful for a couple of days, but if we look at it in a more historic context, context it uh, rivaled Hurricane Agnes of 1972 in terms of rainfall and impact on our local waterways and things like that. So um, our crews, uh, whether it be emergency services, our water and sewer crews, our crews at the uh, water treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, had to really step up their game to respond to the impacts of Tropical Storm Fred and by a number of intense rainfall events that we continue to get throughout the, the year. Um, Interestingly enough, it also has been an extremely windy year, some of you may have noticed, um, but that keeps our Public Works Department 
very busy as well, and uh, we're, we're happy with the work that they provide us. As we started to emerge from COVID last spring, about this time, uh, we certainly had great things in mind and we tried to reestablish some community events uh, with varying degrees of success. Um, this year, we're confident that uh, our regular events and some enhanced events and expanded uh, offerings will continue throughout the community. Things like the holiday parade, uh, concerts in the park, movies in the park, things like that, and some of the, the normal events that the community is used to, as well as some additions, will, will continue to roll out. Um, Falcon Park, as you may recall, underwent a significant renovation a couple of years ago. And at the time that the renovation happened, just as uh, we rolled out a beautiful new facility, we ended up dealing with COVID. We ended up dealing with a uh, contractual discussion with between minor league baseball and major league baseball, which all impacted things. But last year, we were able to uh, utilize the new improved Falcon Park uh, pretty significantly. And this year, we expect even more activity there, supporting our Auburn High School teams, Cuga County, Cuga Community College teams, as well as the Auburn Double Days, which is now uh, not a minor league team, but part of a collegiate team. Um, the facility is fantastic. It may seem hard to imagine when you, if you were to walk outside today that we've already hosted events at Falcon Park already this year, but because of the improvements that were made, uh, that is the case. And approximately four weeks ago, there was uh, an event going on at Falcon Park. So the project continues to be uh, useful and the facility is highly sought after for a number of sports and activities. Along the way and, and through the pandemic, what we saw in the community and all across the country was an increase in home sales and an increase in home valuation. As part of our regular operation here at the City of Auburn and as recommended by the State Comptroller and uh, State Office of Real Property, the City of Auburn revalues property on a regular basis every few years. So that process took place this year. Over 8,000 parcels, nearly 9,000 parcels were revaluated. Re and um, the impact of that while shocking to some folks, many folks, uh, is a signal that obviously property values in the city of Auburn are, are going up. Uh, it shows a significant growth in housing and commercial property sales. And we remind the community that home ownership is an investment. And when our property values go up, that shows a, a healthy economy in most cases, and it's growing personal wealth, which is important. Uh, it also does not necessarily mean an increase in taxes, depending on where you fall in that situation. So that's an ongoing process. The mayor mentioned a new ambulance service. Uh, for many years, there had been discussion about the, uh, the, the need or an opportunity to provide municipal ambulance services. We had kept an eye on that, that program for, for quite a few years and rolled it out. We began the process with a vote of council uh, in spring of 2021, and the ambulance actually provided its first transport uh, officially in November of 2021. Um, while this new service uh, seemed to be a shock to some folks in the community, uh, we keep a good eye on what's going on throughout New York State and throughout the country. Uh, this is not unprecedented, and as a matter of fact, it's something that is uh, happening with more frequency across New York State as private providers struggle to uh, staff and provide the necessary services, and, uh, uh, definitely an essential service. So uh, we are still working to, to grow the program. We hired on uh, Keziah Sullivan as our director of operations early on in the process, and she's done a great job putting the program together. It continues to, to grow and um, mature 
through the, the process, but it's providing good service and uh, we are seeing much less need for mutual aid from our neighboring partners in the EMS world. The next thing on our slideshow here is a landfill transfer station, which had its first full year of operation in 2021. Uh, as you may recall, the landfill reached the end of its useful life in the it last year, and we had to go through a closure process to meet all of the DEC requirements related to that. Uh, there were several options uh, that had been explored throughout the years, including the expansion of the landfill, which was a multi-million dollar proposal uh, that financially just doesn't work out. So what happened is last year the landfill closed, went through a, a full closure process uh, that is wrapping up, the final pieces of it will wrap up this spring. Transfer station is there. The impact on the local community really is nothing because uh, trash pickup at the curb for residential customers continues on as it has in the past. As has happened for many years, we have a street tree replacement initiative uh, out and about, which is more important than it has, ever has been. Uh, we are undergoing a tree removal process to remove uh, ash trees that are affected and impacted by the emerald ash borer. Uh, approximately 420 trees have been removed uh, as of the date of uh, putting this together, which is a few days ago. Uh, I believe that's about a third of what we actually need to do in the community. So we still have work to do, but what that does is that leaves uh, open spaces that aren't necessarily appealing to everyone in the community. So we are uh, actively working on a tree replacement plan, plantings and citywide inventory of street trees, and a management plan for our street trees through a variety of funding sources. Over the last couple of years, and especially the last 12 months, we've taken a really uh, critical look at our neighborhoods and uh, through a, a variety of perspectives and are focusing on improving neighborhoods uh, through a variety of means. Uh, we continue to do demolitions of properties that are just too far gone to uh, rehabilitate as a means to take care of blighted properties and properties where uh, problematic activities are taking place. Uh, we're removing those on a regular basis. Uh, sidewalk improvements continue to happen throughout the city. There was a Lake Ave Bridge lighting project as well as some other lighting upgrades throughout the city. Our goal is to improve property values, reduce crime, reduce blight, and improve curb appeal in neighborhoods. One of the ways we did that is also to uh, approximately six months ago start to utilize what is referred to as a nuisance abatement committee for problematic properties. And uh, it's been highly utilized. The committee meets once a month to discuss properties that we receive complaints about, uh, typically uh, in reference to criminal activity seems to be the, the biggest issue that uh, we have. So. Uh, the nuisance property committee has taken action on several properties, but overall the program has been successful in that uh, as soon as a property owner is aware that a property is before that committee, we've been seeing results, we've been seeing actions by property owners uh, without the need to take uh, significant action by the committee. So uh, we feel that that's a success. Our code enforcement department continues to work on uh, doing the job they do for new construction and for uh, general maintenance. Uh, in the previous year, over 1,500 complaints were received, through over 3,000 violations were written, and we continue to work through the process with property owners, through the court system, through whatever means necessary to try to clean up our neighborhoods. Um, Last year, we also took a relatively unprecedented local uh, step of actually securing a few properties that were problematic and a blight on neighborhoods, and we did that in coordination with the police department, code enforcement, the fire department, 
in most cases, the Department of Social Services from the county to make sure that those displaced from these properties uh, were offered appropriate accommodations. Again, when, when uh, COVID hit a couple of years ago, many communities ceased uh, projects. We did not, we continued to move forward. I think that worked out well for us because we had contractors in the community that were eager to keep working. Uh, we maintained good pricing on the projects during that time and continued to advance important projects forward. So uh, in 2021, we completed the State Street Bridge Replacement Project uh, between Curley's and the Auburn Correctional Facility. Um, that replaced a bridge that was in significant disrepair. It was dangerous, uh, had had some temporary fixes applied to it over the years. Um, it also cleaned up some abandoned parcels adjacent to the bridge, as well as the retaining walls along the outlet, work, which were becoming problematic. So uh, that was one, yet another one of our bridge projects that took place in 2021. Another very visible and for some folks uh, probably very inconvenient project that took place but happened in a relatively short amount of time in the big scheme of things was the South Street reconstruction project from uh, roughly Clymer Street to the city line. Approximately 2,500 linear feet of, uh, of South Street was totally reconstructed and that included water line, sewer line, uh, storm sewer, a culvert replacement, the installation of curbs and sidewalks, and street lighting in that area. So uh, definitely a very significant upgrade in that area that improves traffic flow, pedestrian accessibility, and just the general uh, overall appeal at this one of the southern gateways to the city. Also completed last year was uh, the construction of Auburn Fire Station, the, the main headquarters station, which had been housed at uh, Market Street since approximately 1930. A new fire station was constructed at the corner of Seminary and Nelson Street to, to house the main operations of the fire department, as well as uh, our city uh, information technology hub and a community emergency operations center. Uh, I think as most of us can see any evening watching the, the evening news across the country, we, we tend to have more and more severe weather events. Uh, the inclusion of an emergency operations center in any community is a high priority item by, by most standards nowadays. Um, IT infrastructure and IT security is also a, a big issue. We're hearing more and more of, we've made a major investment in our IT infrastructure over the last couple of years and we'll continue to do so to reduce our vulnerability to uh, a number of things that can happen related to security breaches and things like that or interruption of essential services. The city continues to improve parks throughout the city. Uh, this is an ongoing process and the list of parks that have been completed is now much larger than the parks that are still on the list, on the to-do list. Uh, in 2021, major work was completed at the Bradford Street Playground. Uh, that work will be completed uh, sometime this spring. St. Francis Park uh, ended up with a significant number of tree plantings and we ended up with uh, work in Miles Lepic Park. We continue to look at uh, several parks in the city and over the next couple of years, pretty much every park in the city will have been uh, revitalized and invested in. Spoke earlier about Casey Park or uh, Falcon Park and adjacent to that is Casey Park, uh, often just referred to simply as the ice rink or the pool. Uh, over the last roughly five years, there's been major investments uh, into Casey Park. The park was built in the early 1970s and uh, had had some 
investments made over the years, but in the last five years, there's been significant upgrades to the entire facility, including playground a few years ago, um, a chiller for the ice rink, um, upgrades to the pool. This year, uh, there were more additions to the ice rink by replacing dasher boards, redoing the locker rooms, uh, redoing the scoreboard there. And we continue the process with some locker room upgrades that will serve the purpose of a uh, women's locker room at that facility, which has been pointed out to us was lacking in the past. Uh, was certainly not a much of a consideration in the early 1970s, but is today, so we're working on that. And um, that facility has been programmed again very, very much throughout the winter months, and we're working on a program uh, to expand its utilization throughout the summer months as well. Moving to downtown, uh, we have a parking garage renovation project that uh, due to circumstances outside of our control is uh, actually extended over a couple of seasons due to a fire that occurred in the garage in 2019. So uh, unfortunately to our businesses and uh, neighbors downtown, uh, there's been a significant amount of work in the parking garage. But it does provide the appropriate parking accommodations for an, all of our downtown businesses and entertainment venues, for our tourism venues, and for government operations. But we hope to wrap up the parking garage project in June uh, at the latest of this year, hopefully uh, to wrap that project up, improve lighting, improve the structural conditions most importantly, but improve lighting and the general um, appeal and sense of security in that facility by June. Uh, moving down to State Street downtown, there had literally been a hole in the landscape for over 20 years, which uh, through a lot of coordination, hard work of staff, cooperation of neighbors and adjacent uh, business owners, we finally have a project that is nearing completion and we hope by June or so the plaza itself will be completed and then we'll be doing a restoration of the street in that area that's uh, been beat up a little bit through the process. So the State Street, that one block of State Street should be uh, open and clear of construction hopefully by uh, midsummer, and will be attractive rather than the big blank green wall that had been there for many, many years and a place where we can have uh, some public gatherings, while continuing the flow of traffic on State Street, which will improve this, the safety of those events and uh, just in general improve the neighborhood. And our neighbors in that area, the private property owners, uh, most of the owners in that area are undergoing their own improvement projects to improve their facades and, uh, and just generally give the area a facelift. Uh, Getting back to Casey Park, uh, some folks may know, many probably don't, there is a skateboard park at Casey Park uh, that's quite old now and uh, not as attractive to folks in, that pursue that hobby as uh, could be. So there's a project underway with a variety of funding sources to reconstruct a state-of-the-art, world-class skate park at Casey Park. So that project is underway. There have been several community meetings about that that have been extremely well attended, and we're excited to see that project move forward as well. Getting back into a, a little bit of our uh, policing and community relations stuff, emergency services, uh, last year, in June, uh, Police Chief Sean Butler retired, and we promoted James Slayton to the position of Police Chief. So uh, he wasted no time getting busy and uh, picking up where uh, the previous chief had left off, and we had things to do related to uh, police reform that we wrapped up last year, uh, 
we brought on uh, a new position within the police department or a new title referred to as special patrol officers. Those uh, few positions were used to supplement the school resource officers positions in our schools, which allowed us to keep more police officers on the streets doing what they need to do. We also brought on 10 new police officers to fill, to fill vacancies in the department. Uh, that had been an ongoing problem, uh, the number of vacancies in the department and the num length of time it takes to train folks to fill those positions. So uh, we are down to approximately 10 vacancies up from a high that was in the, uh, the double digits, low teams at one point in time. So we're making progress there and we're getting more police officers on the street. That's a good thing. Uh, we continue to work with Cuga County and Cuga Counseling Services and the Cuga County Health Department related to and, and the uh, Cuga County uh, Social Services related to mobile crisis intervention teams and we're anxious to expand that program which now is just a few hours a day. We're looking to uh, expand that program so that we can again free up officers and put the right people in the street to deal with some of the mental health crisis issues that are uh, occurring in our, na in our community. We're continuing uh, forward with the process of implementing the body worn camera system for our police officers. The product has been ordered, the policies are uh, just about developed for that. So uh, within a few months we anticipate body worn cameras will be uh, implemented within the Auburn Police Department. Uh, the department continues to train and uh, with a focus on community policing and public relations and they're undergoing and, and wrapping up their accreditation process. Just to give a brief update on the downtown revitalization initiative. Uh, those projects under the Downtown Revitalization Initiative represent $10 million investment from New York State into the City of Auburn through uh, funding for both public and private projects. The uh, projects that I had mentioned prior, the Fire Station Project and the State Street Plaza Project, both benefited from funding through the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. And some of the other projects that are either happening or been completed in the downtown uh, that received funding from the Downtown Revitalization Initiative are uh, Rudolph's downtown, the Cuga Community College's Culinary Center, uh, the Nick's Ride facility, Auburn Public Theater, Seward House Museum, the Cuga Museum, and the Schweinfurth uh, Art Center campus, as well as Health Central. And there's also some uh, smaller projects that are out there that were funded through a portion of this funding that went out and was a, a competitive process for smaller businesses to also participate in that process, and that's moving forward. Continuing forward into the, this, the rest of this year and next year, we're going to be looking at a renovation project for the police station and the old fire station, which is currently housing the ambulance. Um, we know that we have structural issues with the Aurelius Ave Bridge and the Lake Avenue Bridge. So those projects are moving forward and both of those projects have been identified by New York State for funding as well. So those projects will move forward. And that's a, a lengthy process that may take a little bit of time to actually complete those, but work is moving. Uh, we are looking at a rehabilitation project for Hoops Park, specifically the pond area, and uh, maybe some general improvements to Hoops Park, and a renovation project for City Hall. Again, uh, similar to the fire station, this building was built in 1930, and would benefit from just an overall general rehabilitation but it also is in need of security upgrades and, and um, mechanical upgrades and such. So we'll be moving ahead with that project. Some other things going on in the community. Some of the challenges we face currently is we have a highly competitive labor market right now. 
which is making it more difficult for us as, uh, as an employer to even fill our own positions, but it certainly is driving costs related to construction projects that we pursue, as well as the increased cost and lack of availability of, of raw materials and components for various projects that we're working on. So those, I think, are our two biggest challenges as we move forward. Um, on the positive side of things, we're seeing significant uh, increases in sales tax revenue, approximately 20% 20, 20 uh, compared to the previous year, which is an indicator that we've got a, a good, strong local economy. Um, we are eligible and the recipient of, or potential recipient of, expanded state and federal infrastructure funding opportunities. Uh, that comes with an awful lot of work, but the, this community has been extremely successful at applying for, receiving, and administering grants to improve our community. And we're seeing an increased interest in commercial development in some of our commercial areas. So those are all good things or indicators that there's an interest in people doing business in Auburn. We know that there's an interest in people buying homes in Auburn and uh, we'll continue to do the work we need to do to uh, move the community forward, improve neighborhoods, and focus on growth and revitalization. Uh, and that's all I have. That's kind of a wrap up to our city state of the city for 2021 and looking forward into 2022 and I'd like to just again thank our staff that continues to put in a tremendous amount of work to take care of the things that happen every day that oftentimes the community doesn't even know are happening but uh, make the community great our private investors in the community that continue to have faith in in the business climate here and uh, expand their businesses or grow their businesses and all of our partners that we've uh, work through to try to make these good things happen. So thank you and thanks again to the chamber. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor Quill. Um, and we will do our best to get the video and some of the slides that you weren't able to see. We'll forward those to you at the end of this. Um, does anybody have any questions for either Mayor Quill or Jeff Digert at this point? No questions by anybody? Um, we do have our state of the schools tomorrow at 10 a.m. also on Zoom. And then next week we have our state of the county on Wednesday, March 30th. You need to register for those separately to get the link. Um, so apologize for the, the glitch and some of the things here, but we'll get you that information with without any questions. I think that's the end of our state of the city presentation. I thank everybody so much for coming on and look forward to seeing everybody very soon in person. Thank you, Amy. Thank you thank for you. Everyone, to everyone. Amy? Yes. Can I do a quick plug before everyone tunes out? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Danny. Go ahead. I just apologize. Uh, so for those that don't know me, my name is Danielle Zabo, the Interim Executive Director at CEDA, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to promote um, the City of Auburn has allocated $500,000 of ARPA funding to help small businesses in grant forms. Uh, last Friday, uh, CEDA has launched the application process. So any business that's located within the city of Auburn can apply up to $40,000 in grant funds. Um, you can reach out to CEDA to work with a specialist to complete the application. All the information is on the CEDA website as well as the application is on the city of Auburn website. Uh, the application will be open until April 30th. So there is uh, about a month time to apply. We will also be hosting info sessions on ARPA funding to go over the process and answer any specific application questions a business owner may have about that. Next week on uh, March 29th and March 30th, we'll be promoting those info sessions. 
Thank you so much, Danny. So any information you need on ARPA funding, count, contact our CETA folks or the city of Auburn. And thanks again, everybody. Uh, they have put some information about both of those things in the chat for you also. So have a great afternoon.